Good morning and welcome. Welcome once again to our morning devotions here from Codrington College as we find ourselves in the middle of this wonderful week. A week that has been all about the oneness of our Lord Jesus the Christ and the Father. A week that is about Jesus who is the Good Shepherd one who lays down his life for the sheep. A week that has encouraged us to look towards the Beatitudes and the rhythm of life, the flow of life, the times when we are called to let go, the times when we are called to embrace. A really moving week, a week with a lot that was going on and no doubt a week that had all manner of things going on in your life. Things that you were challenged by, things that you had to resolve, things that you had to experience and to know for yourself. Yes, all this happens every day in our lives. We are forever learning. We are forever going to school. And it causes you to smile because, you know, when you leave high school or your university, you think, oh, good, thank God, that's all over. And the next thing you know, you're back in school. But even more so than that, when one comes to the realization that one's entire life is school. It's a constant growing and like a friend of mine makes the point that the difference is that at school you know what you're aiming for. At least you know the steps. You see others before you. But with this journey, each one is unique. And you can't pattern yours after somebody else's. You don't know what the twists and turns are. All you know is that you're being called to stay on the path one foot in front of the other stay on the path do not deviate do not cover it out but stay on the path and engage all that the path brings to you that is our work that is our schooling but at least i hope the fact that we by doing it together makes a difference. So welcome. Welcome to our morning devotion. It is good that you are here. So we breathe consciously, aware of every breath, aware of that inner presence, Aware of that inner peace, we breathe. And we come down and out our hearts in the spirit of gratitude. And there in our hearts, we allow that spirit of gratitude to radiate. Being so conscious of all the things for which we can be thankful in this moment as we hear the songs of the morning rising up becoming louder and we know the day is at hand and we know in a few moments we are going to be pulled here and there but in this moment in this one moment, we are here together, feeling each other, allowing that spirit that pervades us all, that unites us all, to bring us together. O oh, loving God, 
You gather your children together like a hen gathers her chicks. May we not resist, but may we willingly come together under your wings. That not only will you provide for us protection, but that you may feed us, nurture us, teach us, and assist us in growing. In your name we pray. Amen. A reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 17th and 18th verses of chapter 5. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. For I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord.
the word of God. And its abiding presence in our lives. Unchanged. Untouched. Jesus warned us that the law will not disappear. It is to be fulfilled. And that is the work that we all share in. The work of fulfilling the law. That ultimate law that has been given to us. The law of love. This journey of ours is a journey towards love, to the fullness of love. And the more we journey, the more we experience, the more we learn, the more we lift our planet up. Because our planet must ascend, it must come up higher. There must come a time when there's no more violence. And we know that that is a goal. Because there have been moments in history where persons have lamented violence and wars. And they have in many ways and at many times vowed to not go that route again. When the treaty was signed after the Great World Wars, there was a sense that there was to never to be another war like that. That was the war to end all wars. But we don't end wars by imposing peace. Just like we didn't end racism by liberating the slaves or by legislating the abolition of slavery. Those conditions come when men and women ascend when men and women cannot see it in any sphere of their existence that such could be possible as long as it remains a possibility it will always exist you can't legislate it because the mere fact that you legislate it means that you're seeking to contain some body of persons. These things are things that are to be accomplished from within. And the only way they can be accomplished is if the human person, each human person, makes an effort to ascend. And when enough of us are ascending, we can transform our planet. It is not about the persons over there. It's not about that particular country or this particular one. It's about you and it's about me. What's happening in the Ukraine is not about Russia and Ukraine. It's about you and it's about me. You know, it's said that the COVID virus attacks persons in their weakest place, wherever their immune system or their body is showing some particular disease 
or weakness. The virus seems to go there and accentuates it, makes it seriously worse. We can think of the situation in the Ukraine and Russia at this time in a similar way. The evil of war is like a virus and it acts the whole earth. The whole earth. And it is constantly attacking the whole earth. But it manifests not across the whole world. But it manifests in those places where there's weakness, where there's disunity, where there's vengeance or animosity or old grudges. We see it in those places. We saw a little bit of it in the United States recently when they stormed the Capitol and persons were getting their weaponry out waiting for the call to arms. We saw it there. Many of us were alarmed. Just as we were alarmed with Russia and Ukraine, we were alarmed that this could actually happen in the US of A at this time. But we fail to realize that it never went away. It was just covered over. We're called to love, but we're not able to love. Not as we are. There's work for us to do, each one of us. Because each one of us contributes to the whole and wherever we allow weakness, there is where we are attacked. So we don't just pray for Russia and Ukraine, or we don't just pray for those right-wingers in the United States. We pray for ourselves. I pray for me and you pray for you that we may come up higher, that we may do what is within our power to facilitate the oneness of our world, the ascension of this earth. Jesus isn't lowering the standard. He's saying come up higher. We've got tools to help us. And we must use those tools. We must spend time alone with the divine, with God, with the all that is. And we must experience our own ascension, our own being lifted up. so that we can lift others up. For when we are lifted up, we impact those who are around us, and they are lifted up. They experience some of what we are experiencing, and together we grow. So Jesus warns us that there's no accommodation here. You're not coming down to make us feel better. We're holding the bar where it is. And no matter how many lifetimes it takes, no matter how many efforts they make at it, that's where it is. And little by little, we will edge our way towards it. Because that's the only place we can go. So buckle down. 
let us make it sooner rather than later. Let us apply ourselves to the task and ensure that we do our part. We make it happen in our space so that the kingdom of God may come quickly. <laughs>